Alright, if you watched a few of my games or if you followed my career, you would know that I had a problem with cramps. So I know that my whole basketball career, I was dehydrated. I was dehydrated. But now for my Daldal career, Gatorade made sure that I will not cramp up. I don't know I don't know if there was ever a YouTuber who cramped up on on, on cam while 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 talking, but Gatorade made sure that you won't see one, at least from my channel. Thank you to our friends from Gatorade for sending these over and damn it man. I just got one because you know, you already know I had to. Thank our sponsor for this video. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Mikey Reyes, you already know, back on my channel. Thank you very much to those who support the last night's video. Um, a lot of, it was pretty controversial. I heard that other, uh, I just heard a lot of things, man. May mga disagree, may mga nag-agree. Um, but the end of, at the end of the day, man, again, those are my opinions. Nothing is said on stone. Nothing that I speak of on this channel. Hindi sila, hindi sila foolproof or hindi sila based on any Bible, alright? These are my opinions, my thoughts. So that's just how it is sometimes when you speak your thoughts, man. Some will agree, some will disagree. But at the end of the day, man, it's all love. There's no hate on this channel. Thank you very much to those who are subscribed, who just subscribed. Thank you very much. And to those who haven't, hit that subscribe button, man. We got a lot more basketball content coming your way. And you already know, I'm going to try to be here for the long haul. Kahit medyo pagod ako ngayon, came from a workout. But... You know, we gotta do what we gotta do, especially with the help of Gatorade. Medyo sumasobra na yung ano ano yung exposure ng Gatorade sa video nato. But yo, they're the sponsor for this video, so thank you very much again to our friends from Gatorade, man. Thank you. All right, all right. After last night's video for today, Q and A tayo. Um, I've I've had like four POVs the past. The past four videos were POV. So I was thinking to myself, yo, mag QA naman tayo. And also, since wala tayong kwentong Mikey for a while now, wala pa since I think the key for one. May konting kwentong Mikey din naman tung, tung QA natin. Because someone asked me, alright? Actually, no one asked me. Ako lang, nag, ako lang nagsasabi nitong topic na to. Because it's my channel. So I get to choose what the topics are. Let's just pretend that someone asked me. <laughs> someone asked me who were five people. Whether it be coaches, players, or pastat people in my life that unknowingly inspired me growing up. Let's just pretend someone asked me that, okay? Let's pretend someone asked me. I'll just put it up here para kung may nagtanong. So, five people whom unknowingly inspired me growing up. Sa basketball, sa basketball. Alright? Let's talk about that. It's gonna be... I'm, I'm excited for this because I get to share a couple of the people that touched my life, my basketball career, and helped me, you know... Um, who I am right now, these five people unknowingly had a big part of that. Like a big, big part of that. And I will make Quento also how they inspired me or touched me without them even knowing it. <laughs> so yun yung pag-uusapan natin tonight, man. I'm excited for this and let's get it going, man. Let's get it going. Okay, so the first person that really challenged me or inspired me or pushed me. Grade school pa lang ako. Yeah, grade school ako, incoming high school. No cap. He might get surprised. I don't even know if he watches my channel, man. I don't even know if he... We're not even that close, to be honest with you. Because we've always been rivals ever since high school. Grade school in Dimashado, but high school, we were rivals. I'm talking about... Uh, he plays for the PBA. He plays in the PBA now. He plays for uh, Terra... F I don't even know what they're called. But it's a Kia. Terra Firma. Terra Firma. Or whatever. He plays for Kia. Used to be an Ateneo Blue Eagle. Used to be an Ateneo Blue Eaglet. Wami Chongson. Alright, so Wami, if you're watching this, man, I hope you hear this story because you unknowingly pushed me, my guy. Or maybe you did know that. Because, you know, we were always going at it every time we saw each other on the floor. Whether it be uh, La Salle versus Ateneo or we saw each other as Elite and those things. So, uh, or UP Ateneo even. Uh, so, yeah, Wami Chongson, man. Okay, so here's the story. Quick story about Wami Chongson. Alright. Wami Chongson was low key. The reason why I transferred to Lasalle Green Hills from Ateneo. Low key. Like, I know I wasn't good enough coming out of grade school. I I was trying out for the Pasarel team, uh, grade 7 ako noon, in coming first year high school. I already passed the Ateneo entrance exam for high school. Okay na, pasok na akong Ateneo. Ready to go na ako. Full, like, since prep ako Ateneo na ako, all the way hanggang grade 7. So, all I knew was Ateneo. Like, sa Ateneo ako mag-high school. Okay. Tryout ako, pasarel. 
All right. Si Wami Chong Son was a stud. Wami Chong Son was a uh, was like the chosen one in grade school. Trust me. He played for CSA and he was just crazy good at a young age. I think he dropped 60 in an SPP game. SBP 60. Wami Chong Son for CSA. All right. So when I was an incoming freshman. And I was trying out for the Pasarel team. Wami Chong Son transferred to Ateneo. So, when Wami Chong Son transferred to Ateneo from CSA, obviously that's a, that's a point guard spot right there. And during that time, there were already a lot of point guards. I was basically, basically ako yung final cut. And because Wami Chong Son was a point guard, like, obviously, ako na yung, I, I, I was cut. Diba? So, when Wami Chong Son transferred to Atene, that's when I tried out for Lasal, and then Lasal picked me up. From Katipunan, I transferred all the way to Green Hills, and then that was just the start of my high school basketball career. And then, from that point on, Wami Chong Son was always my barometer. He was always... Did I, did I use that term correctly? My barometer? I sound so smart. Pagod pa ako nito, but I sound so smart. My, he was my standard nung mga first year, second year high school ako because I knew that Wami Chong Son was the shit, man. He, he, was, he was called Magic Chong Son in high school. Like, ganun siya kagaling. Like, Magic Johnson Chong Son. Magic Chong Son. You get what I'm... You get, you get the... That gets you, that gets you. You get that? You get that? That was funny, right? So, Magic Chong Son. He was called Magic Chong Son, man, in high school. So, here was my standard, all right? So, first year, second year, third year, I was slowly, you know, getting better, get improving, and everything like that. But I always looked up, like, Wami Chong Son. Wami Chong Son was the guy I needed to catch in terms of my skills, in terms of my production, in terms of just being an overall basketball player, I need to catch up to Wami Chong Son. That was the shit. That was in my head the whole time. Alright, so, third year high school, NCAA na ako. Top point guard na ako ng Lasal Green Hills ng third year high school ako. Pero, I still felt like, hindi ko pa napuprove sa tao na I can run with these with, with Wami Chong Son. Alright, so, when the 2008 Elite Cap, Nike Elite Cap happened, and I was invited, and then I got, I get to Brent Pamplasa, and that was a week na dun kayo all the best high school players are gonna be there. And then I saw Wami Chongson. Obviously, Wami Chongson was there. I was like, okay, I gotta do something in this camp. Because, like, I just needed to prove it, at least to myself, that I can hang with Wami Chongson. Alright? So, first day pa lang, guys, Wami Chongson was going off. But, on the other side of that court, I was going off. All right, so the whole week, trust me, it was Wami Chongson and his team. It was Mikey Reyes and his team, and we were just going at it. All right, and I, back of my head, Wami Chongson, I need to outplay that guy. And they know, they all know this. Every time you mga ganon may mga little breaks, they always talk about the elite five, which, which was the mythical five, and then my the second team. May mga ganon yani. And I was, I would always hear, ah, si Wami Chong Son, sure na Elite 5. Ah, si Wami Chong Son, sure na Elite 5. So, that, that was like, ooh, I gotta show something. Okay. So anyway, it was fun, man. The Elite Camp was 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 memorable. And he, it was just, a, there was just a chip on my shoulder that I need to prove to myself that mas magaling ako kay Wami. Hindi naman mas magaling, pero like, kaya ko makipagsabayan. And then, out of nowhere, we see each other as a three-point shootout. And then, man, I get his number. It's a three-point shootout. So I was like, okay, that's a win for me. That's a win, guys. That's a win. And then the mini tournament that happened inside Brett Mamplasan with all the players. And I'm the champion. Din ako. Well, malakas kasi yung team ko. I had Kevin Alas, Oda Tampus. Diba? I had those guys, Roger Cabrera. So I was pretty strong. I had a pretty strong team. So I'm not going to take all the credit for that. But I won the championship. Wami didn't. I won the three-point shootout. Wami didn't. All-star game. He won the all-star game. I lost the all-star game. But... I was named Elite 5 and I was named MVP of that camp. So, like, it gave me a little bit of, kumbaga, okay, I'm here. Like, I can hang with Wami Chong Son. I think I can make it to college. Like, I, I, I actually am someone now because I can hang with him. So, he pushed me, man. Wami Chong Son pushed me as a grade schooler to a high schooler and gave me enough, you know, like, enough motivation to really, like, try and reach my full potential in high school. And he didn't know. Trust me, man. I don't know. I don't know, kapal naman ang mukha mo, Wami, kung alam mo yun, pero <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. But yeah, you pushed me, bro. If you're watching right now, which I doubt, you pushed me. Um, so yeah, that was the first person that he unknowingly, like really, really, like I was so, 
Like, I need to beat this guy. I need to beat this guy. Oh, and then, oh yeah, I forgot. But I forgot, Wami. Uh, naglaban kami sa Phil Oil, parang exhibition game, Atenea versus Lasal after the Elite Camp. And this happened. So, I'm just sorry, man. Like, just give this to me, man. Kasi na, nung time na to, ikaw yung ano ko, ikaw yung standard ko. So, like, I felt like if I could beat you, or if I could hang with you, I'm one of the best point guards in the country. So that's all. That's much respect for you, man. And good luck to you in your PBA career. I'm very, very happy. You've always been a hooper. Guys, I mean, if Wami's not watching, guys, Wami's a, Wami has always been a hooper and he still does, you know, show out and ball out uh, with Kia in the PBA. So good luck to you, man. And yeah, that's, that was my first guy who unknowingly inspired me growing up. Next, another point guard. Ito hindi niya alam to, for sure. For sure, hindi niya alam to. He's, th- he's in the PBA now. He's, he- he's playing for Northport Batang Pier. He played for the DLSU Green Archers. He went to San Beda for high school and then LaSalle Green Hills for before he transferred to San Beda. Alright, so you already know. LA Revilla. LA Revilla, guys! Alright. Ito yung kwento ko kay LA. Ah. Nung lumipat ako ng, ng LaSalle, coming from Ateneo, pagpasok ko ng gym, um, ano to, um, incoming freshman ako, tatryout pa lang ako. Ah. Pasok ko ng gym. Hindi ako kasama sa NC team. Doon ako sa mga Jun, yung sa Prada, yung ganun. Kasi, yung NC, iba yun eh. Yun na yung talagang third year, fourth year, second year, guys. Eh. Yung mga magagaling talaga. Yun yung Team A eh. Dito lang ako sa Team B nag-tryout. But, I would see across the whole gym, dun sa Court A, yung NC team. And I would watch LA Revilla, man. I didn't even know him at the time. I was like, who's this small kid who has, like, crazy handles? And then just can can just like ball, diba? So pinapanood ko lang siya, and he didn't, he didn't even know it. Like I was like, damn, sino to? Sino tong Revilla? Like I never heard of him. Like whoa, wild. Like he had crazy handles. He had a sh- he had a pull up game that was like, like just hooper shit. Right? I was in awe of El Revilla when I first saw him that summer, and then. He didn't know this, but syempre, I was a fanboy, diba? So, I was sitting sa gitna ng Lasal gym. Tapos na yung practice namin. So, I was talking with a couple of friends. And then, the NC team was still practicing. Eli Revilla, hindi ko alam. Feeling ko, in ano siya, parang pinag-light siya nung scrimmage. Eh. And I was in white. So, this guy was in dark. Hindi siya naka-reversible. This guy runs all the way to me. I didn't know him, man. Like, I didn't know. I, like, we didn't know each other personally. But he asked for my jersey to swap with his para makapag-white siya dun sa scrimmage nila. So, I got his jersey. Low-key, hindi ko na binalik. Alright? So, it wasn't even a LaSalle jersey, man. It was like a 3-on-3 street ball, like Adidas street ball uh, jersey. So, like, that was my LA Revilla memorabilia from that time. And then, low-key, nag-tune up game, LaSalle Zobel versus LaSalle Green Hills. So, kaming mga bata, nakaupo lang kami sa bleachers. And bro, it was LA Revilla versus Simon Atkins in the flesh. Like, I didn't even know Simon Atkins at the time. Kasi grade schooler ako, so hindi ko alam kung ano nangyari sa juniors. So hindi ko kilala yung mga tao doon. Sina Webb, Martin Reyes was there, Mixed the Asses were there, was there. And then for LaSalle Green Hills, it was Nico Salva. It was LA Revilla. It was like, whoa. Like, as a grade schooler in coming high school, I was like, yo, these are grown men. Like, going at it. It was Ellie Revilla and Simon Atkins. And then, I remember, ow, 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 Guys, jab step, jab step, drive baseline, reverse, reverse between the legs, step back. AI, Allen Iverson move, legit, reverse between the legs, step back, and then he pulls for the jumper. And then I was like, yo, eh. like, like it was my, it was like as a kid, that was the first time I saw someone make such a grown man move. Like, in the flesh. So, it was like, yo, Eli Revilla is the shit, man. Eli Revilla is the shit. He was the shit. Trust me. Okay? And then, after, I was I was trying out the whole summer. And then, I transferred down to start the school year. Right before the school year started, he's trans- he transfers to San Beda. So, yung two months na, one and a half to two months na yun, yun na yung na-cherish kung napanood ko si Eli Revilla araw-araw. So talagang tinatry ko siyang gayahin, tinatry kong gayahin yung moves niya, tinatry kong gayahin yung handles niya. So, 
Ito yung nangyari. Lumipat siya ng San Beda. When I got to third year high school, fourth year siya, naglaban kami for the first time sa the arena. Or the second time pala, not the first. The second time sa the arena. Okay, naglaban kami. I was so hyped na, okay, Eli Revilla, let's go. Like, let's go. This is my idol, man. Like, work so hard. Your, your idols become your rivals. That was the feeling when I was getting into that game. So, starting point guard na ako nun, tapata na kami talaga nun. And then, I scored 20 points that game. Although we lost, we lost to San Beda, but I had 20. Alright? I had my first 20 piece in the NCAA. And then, during the handshake part after the game, Eli Revilla comes up to me and says, oh, bro, good job, ah. Good job. Like, tuloy mo lang yung ginagawa mo. So, that was, like, the first time I was like, ooh. Like, I felt like I got, like, I got approved by an L.A. Revilla. Which, during that time nga, was, like, idol. If, if Wami Chong Son was my standard that I wanted to catch, L.A. Revilla was my idol na gagayahin ko. Like, ganun. Like, I felt like I couldn't, I could never catch him. Like, that was, that was, that, that was, my 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 feeling of Eli Revilla. Like talagang, I just looked up to him, man. I want I liked his I loved his game. I wanted to imitate his game. And there you go. That was Eli Revilla, man. My idol growing up. Especially when I was in high school. And then sadly, when I got into the UAAP sa seniors, the my first season he had uh, he had to sit out due to his um health. So hindi ko siya nakalaban. His second season or my second season Injured ata siya, basta hindi ulit kami naglaban eh. And then, when he came back and then they won the chip and all that, I was injured naman. So, I never got to play against L.A. Revilla again. So, that was the last time when we played against him. Uh, when we played against each other sa arena for the NCAA nung third year high school ako. So, yeah, man, like, L.A. Revilla to this day, I enjoy watching him play, man. He, I believe that he can be, like, a, a, a top point guard in the league and he can be a consistent point guard in the league. And he has been consistent, man. He has been. And he, I just love his perseverance, man. There was a time that he he couldn't find himself in the PBA. No, wala siya. And then he tried out for Kia. And then, you know, he blossomed into another, to kumbaga, a solid point guard in the PBA. But, you know, growing up, Eli Revilla was idol, bro. Idol. All right. Third guy. Who, I don't think he unknowingly inspired me. Naman. I think he knows the man. He, he has a big, he had a big effect on my basketball career. And, man, hanggang itong huling MPBL, I still, I played for him. When I, when I was playing for Bacolod, he was, he was our consultant. So, I was still playing for him and I always enjoy playing for him. I work for the NBTC. I work for Coach E, yung program nila doon. When they need hosts or whatever, they call me. So, I work with him and, you already know, Coach Eric Altamirano um, was the guy who really put me in the map, if that makes sense. Like, like I said, I was already, I was good, pero it was because of Coach E's program, NBTC Elite, na really, I, I, I entered another level, or I got onto another level that I was college ready. It was because of Coach Eric Altamirano, man. And I just have, man, I can, I can, I can make a whole video of how Coach Eric Altamirano touched or inspired or affected my basketball career. But, ito magandang kwento na lang. One kwento. Elite. So, nung elite, di ba nag-MVP nga ako nung elite? So, pinadala kami ng China. Ako, Clark Bautista, Ian Sanggalang, Papot Paredes. Kabing apat. Pinadala sa China to represent the country for the All Asia Nike Camp. Um, so, when we got there, si Coach Eric Altamirano yung kasama namin, di ba? Our first dinner dun sa China. Like, I remember this, like, it was yesterday. Coach Eric Altamirano at the time, because he was a traditional point guard, he really he was really trying to make me understand that I could be a facilitator that I can affect a game by facilitating kumaga pasa pasa you know share the basketball set set other guys up because you already know I was a point guard even back in high school so coach Eric Altamirano was really trying to kumbaga make me understand that side of the game so we were having dinner and then me and Anton Altamirano his son sumama si Anton noon eh nagkukuwentuhan lang kami nila tata nila Anton and then we were talking about idols we were talking about NBA players that we really looked up to so he i think he was talking about i don't know me Kobe Bryant oh, obviously Kobe Bryant uh Anton Altamirano is a big Kobe Bryant fan so he was talking about Kobe Bryant then i i i i, I said something like bro Allen Iverson man like Allen Iverson is the shit bro like he's idol idol coach Eric Altamirano overhears me say that <laughs> and then he looks at me and he goes Mikey 
Si Allen Iverson bang idol mo? Like a judging tone. <laughs> like, si Allen Iverson bang idol mo? Like, I, I guess he was expecting me to say Steve Nash or maybe like, di ba? Like those point guards or Jason Kidd. But no, I was like, AI, the answer. So, Coach Jericho, I was like, Mikey, si Allen Iverson bang idol mo? Like, Baka pwede mo baguhin. Something like that, man. So, I remember that fondly because I was nahihiya ako eh, na parang, hindi coach, hindi Allen Iverson. <laughs> Kasi nga, he was trying to make me understand how I can be a facilitator. Okay? And then, the camp happens. Okay? And then, for some odd reason, I play very, very well and I make it to the All-Star Game. I was the representative of the Philippines or the four of us. I represented us to the All-Star Game. So, I was I was up against like, bamoths, man. Like, I'm gonna show you pictures right here. Like, talaga lalaki mga tao. So, anyway, Naglaro ako sa All-Star Game. Coach Eric Altamiral was in the middle sa may committee siya kasi nanonood na lang lahat eh. It was like the culmination of the whole thing. So naglaro kami. First half, bro, I come into the game, I came off the bench, I come into the game, I was like, fuck this. Like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a go. I'm a go off. Okay, I don't care about all these like Asian people. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a go off. Okay. I don't know if that was racist. I hope it's not. But yeah, a lot of Chinese people. Siyempre, Asian nga, all Asian nga. So anyway, I was like, okay, I'm going to go off. First possession, or maybe like the second, third possession. I bring the ball down, and I'm like, isolation, guys. So I cross the motherfucking point guard that I was up against, and then the whole crowd was like, whoa! Kasi, guys, hindi uso dun yung mga street ball, street ball. Diba basic dun? So every time I dance, everyone's like, oh! So I was like, all right, I get it now. Let's do this. Sasayaw ako every time. Sayaw ako ng sayaw. Oh, tas shoot ako ng shoot. So the first half, I, made, I maybe had like 8, 10 points. All right. So I was like hot. Everyone was like, "Oh, who's that kid?" Diba? Love it the way coach Eric Altamirano during the half. He was like, "Mikey, punta ka dito. Lika dito, lika dito, lika dito." So I go to him. Then he's like, "Oh, Mikey, to start the third quarter, subukan mo mag-facilitate muna, ikot mo muna yung bola, hawak ka muna masyado tira ng tira." In my head, I was like, "But coach, I'm hot right now." But okay, no problem. Coach Eric Altamirano, he's the man. I will always listen to him. Okay. So come third quarter, I was like, "Okay, facilitate. Pass." Pass, drive, pass, drive, pass. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. I think I also committed a couple turnovers, but nothing was happening. No one's, no one, no, none of my teammates were making shots. So Coach Eric Altamanala looks at me because I was like, okay, I need to do something now. So I go, I, I was in, I was at half court. Then I look at Coach Eric Altamanala. Then Coach Eric Altamanala was looking at me. He was like, <laughs> I was like, it was that. He, yo, he allowed me. Like, let's go. Let's go off. So in the second half, I was like, okay, I'm going to do the same exact thing. So I was uh, dancing every single time. I was uh, like isolation every time. And I was making shot after shot after shot. And I, I scored like, I was supposed to be the MVP of that game, but we lost the game. So the MVP went to the some seven foot one guy. So, yun. Coach Eric Altamirano has really touched or affected my basketball career in so many ways. But I remember that story fondly. And if you're watching this, Coach E, I remember that conversation. I don't know if you do. But if you do, thank you, Coach, for giving me the license to be a points guard. Coach, if you're watching, thank you very much again for, for everything you've done for my basketball career. Hopefully, we can work together as soon as possible. And stay safe over there. Sana makabisita ako. Anton, bibisita na ba ako? Kailan ako bibisita, Anton? Ano ba? <laughs> Alright! So, fourth guy. Fourth guy. Um, ito, low-key to. Low-key. This is not a shot. This is not a, this is not a shot at him, ah. Pero during my first season, si Coach Aboy Castro yung coach namin. On my second season, uh, they fired Coach Aboy two games into the season and Coach Boyet Fernandez replaced him. So Coach Boyet Fernandez, and we weren't really, the team wasn't really playing well. Kasi in the middle of the season, di ba nagpalit ng coach? So, you know, we just were, we were struggling. It was a 0-14 season, man. It was, it was that 0-14 season in 2010. But I remember this, like, sobrang naalala ko tong scene na to. Um... We were we were playing sa the arena and Coach Boyet was not did not like did not give me any minutes like nakakalat ako nun eh so hindi niya ako masadong ginagamit so I was sitting on the bench most of the time for Coach Boyet Fernandez and he was putting Mark Lopez in to play point and Mark Lopez is not really a point guard I mean he can play point guard but he's not really a point guard okay so he was playing Mark Lopez he was starting Mark Lopez he was Mark Lopez was the one you know was there most of the game. And I was just playing for like maybe five minutes, six minutes. Mark Lopez during a game in the arena. I remember this. Kasi nakaupo ako sa bench nito. Bangku ako noon. And then Mark Lopez was in. And then he commits his fourth foul early in the fourth quarter. Coach Boyd Fernandez was right in front of me. Coach Potit Devera, yung assistant coach namin, lumapit kay Coach 
Boyet, sabi ni Coach. Coach, apat na si Mark. Coach, apat na si Mark. Labas na natin muna. Early in the fourth, eh. So, Coach, apat na si Mark. And then, Coach Boyet was not budging. He was like, hindi, okay lang. Iwan na muna natin dyan. But Coach Putit was really trying to convince Coach Boyet na apat na si Mark, Coach. So, labas muna natin siya. Balik natin mamaya. Coach Boyet flat out said, Coach, wala tayong point guard. I was on the bench. I was on the bench! This is not a shot at Coach Boyet. Ah. Coach Boyet tells Coach Putit, wala tayong point guard, Coach. I was on the bench like, Yo, did I just hear what I heard? Yo! Yo! So, sobrang, I woke up that day and I was like, yo, this is the last time that I'm ever gonna hear that. So, the years after that, I was really trying to get better. Na talagang, there was no way that I will hear a coach ever say, wala time point guard and I'm on the fucking bench. So, you know, coach, coach boy, I don't even, I don't know, I don't even know if he remembers this, but coach boy really pushed me that day and motivated me. Now, I'm not gonna try to prove you, you, you wrong. Again, this is not a shot at coach boy, man. I mean, he had a point. I was really, I sucked during that season, but, you know, I, I took it to heart. I really put it in my head. Na, okay, I need to be better. I need to be better. And then the following years, every time we went up against San Beda, I was like, yo, I'm going to go off. And I always went off against San Beda, but we, I never won. So still, yo, what can I do? There's the champs. There's the red lions. I'm done with this. So next, the final person that really touched me growing up. And this is a bit major emotional dito because um, a year after he was my coach, we lost him. Coach Ramil Cruz. Uh, coach Ramil Cruz was really close to me because he was our coach during my final. He was our assistant coach during my final season for UP. Okay, and uh, actually the bonfire win. Coach Ray Madrid, our head coach, was suspended for that game. So coach Coach Ramil was the one who coached that game. And I remember the first time I ever met Coach Ramil Cruz. Um, uh, dumating siya tahimik lang si Coach Ramil. Eh. Panahon pa ni Coach Ricky, dumating na si Coach Ramil. Tas nagsu-shooting drills kami, tas nandadaya ako. Typical Mikey Reyes, nandadaya ako. And Coach Ramil Cruz, who was quiet for the first week, siguro, or two weeks that he was there, screamed at me. And he was like, Mikey, wa ka man daya. And I was like, damn. E parang superstar, superstar ako lang. So I was like, damn, like, who, what? Like, that's the first time I heard his voice. And talagang sinigawan niya ako na, Mayus ka, wa ka man daya. So I was like, damn. Okay, so that was the first time I ever met him. And then, when he was our assistant coach, uh, during that, again, that final year, when Coach Ray Madrid was was suspended for that game. Again, I, I said this in one of my videos. I sucked during the first round, first six games. And then against Adamson, Coach Ramil was coaching. And he just gave me the green light to go. And I remember this, man. Entering the third quarter, we were up by maybe 12 points. I had 15 at the half. Eh? And then J.R. Galliarza had 18. So to start the third quarter, Coach Ramil was like, Okay, Mikey, JR, upo muna kayo, magpahinga muna kayo. Kasi we played almost the whole first half. Eh. And then we looked at Coach Ramil and we were like, Coach, hindi, Coach, no. Like, we gotta go. Because we, we, we don't want to give Adamson a chance. So we gotta go. So me and JR were really trying to convince him to start us during the third quarter. And he did. He gave in. He was like, you sure? Kayong dalawa, okay ba kayo? Hindi kayo pagod. Coach, we got this. Okay, he put us in. And then that was the third quarter that we just we just balled out. And we were leading by like 25 or 26 at the end of the third quarter. So Coach Ramil really gave us that, really gave me the confidence to be able to talk to him. And then, kasi nga, sa sobrang tiwala niya sa akin, alam niya na hindi ako mapapagod. Kasi ako pa, sabi ko, Coach, kaya ko to. I can play this whole game. So ayun, nag ako ng bandang dulo. But hey, we won the game. So okay na yun. Again, Gatorade, if you were there, hindi ako magka-craps. But guys, here, ito ah. After that game, there was another game na na-thrown out si Coach Ray Madrid. First half, or first quarter. So the rest of the game, it was Coach Ramil. And we were up against UST. And Coach Ramil, again, let me ball out. So again, I think I had 21, 22 points against UST. But we lost the game. Day after, we were at practice. And I was asked, like, I was seated. And then Coach Ramil was beside me. Ano lang, pre-practice. -pre I was like, Coach, may tanong ako sa'yo. And then he was like, yo, ano yun? Ano yun, Mikey? Sabi ko, Coach, bakit pag ikaw yung nagko-coach, kumbaga kahit nagkakamali ako, hindi mo ako nilalabas. Kasi na-realize ko or na, na medyo nakikita ko na pag si Coach Ray Madrid yung nagko-coach ng UAP season, medyo mas short leash ako. Si Coach Ramil talagang bahala ka. So I was like, Coach, bakit pag, ano, pag ikaw yung nagko-coach, parang pinapabayaan mo lang talaga ako. Then this is what he said that to this day, medyo naaalala ko pa hanggang ngayon. He was like, Mikey, may tiwala kasi ako sa'yo. And that hit me, man. Like, that, at that moment, it hit me na parang, 
yo, there's this coach that really flat out told me my tiwala siya sa akin. So I really, I really looking, I was really looking forward to continue playing with him. And then the season finished. Um, tapos yung free throw story pa. Like if you remember that story, he was the one who really gave me the confidence to make the free throws, which I didn't. Coach Ramil, again, sorry if I if I missed the free throws. But yo, know, a year after, I think it was a year after we lost him. And I still remember the da- the day that I got a phone call that we lost Coach Ramil. He was in the all he was in all PBA in the PBA All Star Weekend, I believe. And then when we lost him, uh, that 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 just sucked. And then during the funeral, then like it, it was it was crazy. So, you know, Coach Ramil to this day to this day, if to the players who know me during prayers prayers ah sa hadel. I write something on the ground with my finger. Ganun ako eh. Pag nagdadasal ako, eh, huddle, like pre-game, post-practice, pre-practice. Any huddle that there's a prayer, I write something on the ground. And I write a couple of things. But one of those things is RC48, which is Ramil Cruz, 48. 48 years old. That's when we that's when we lost him. He was 48 years old. So to this day, man, Coach Ramil is a big part of me. And he really inspired me and motivated me. Ito college na ako. So the other four guys, medyo tumatanda pa lang ako. But Coach Ramil, man, that was, uh, he was really one of my biggest inspirations in life. And I'm always motivated to make him proud. So Coach Ramil, I miss you. I love you. You know that. And to his family, Tita Monet, and the kids, what's up? Hopefully you all are safe. Uh, God bless you guys. And hope I hope I, I hope to see you soon. So stay safe always. So yeah, Coach Ramil Cruz is my fifth and final person who unknowingly really inspired me. So there you have it. Again, another long video. I'm very, very sorry, man. But man, these five guys, really, they deserve a video. They deserve videos of their own. But, you know, at least kahit pa paano nakwento ko sa inyo kung paano nila natouch yung buhay ko, whether it be on the court or off the court. So there you have it, man. Hopefully, y'all had fun. Thank you, guys. Again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button by now, you better do. Kasi hindi, hindi ba kayo natuwa sa limang yun? Come on, man. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button even. All right? All right. And to those who are keep coming back and who keep messaging me, commenting, and just engaging with me on Instagram, whether it be a story, sa DMs, I appreciate you guys as always. Oh, and our memberships. December mag start. Okay? I want it December 1. So December 1 mag start your memberships natin. And we got a lot coming your way. Trust me. All right? So, there you have it. That's my video for tonight. This has been Mike Reyes. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other Peace and love, and I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow Oh, again, thank you Gatorade Thank you very much Thank you, thank you very much Thank you, thank you, thank you